Hello and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today we're going to be getting in how to navigate through traveling and still getting your training in. And this is going to be part one of a two-part series. And the next one, you guessed it, is going to be all about nutrition. But before we dive into that, Alex, how was your weekend? We are in the mix of uh, daylight savings time. Mm -hmm. It's kicking us a little bit. Um, We've been having a little bit of trouble since it kicked in on Sunday with sleep. But prior to that, um, the weekend was pretty relaxed. We had been coming off of, it was relaxed for me. Uh, Sue was was Miss Social still. Yeah, um, this past week I was a social butterfly. Yeah, so Friday night you went and did something uh, with your friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was actually a really, really cool party. It was one of my sister's friends, Tanika, and this was the fifth year that she's thrown that party, and it's called a favorite things party. And you have to bring five of your favorite thing, and then everyone brings five of their favorite thing, and you draw names so everyone leaves with five presents, not everyone leaves leaves with everyone's present or thing, but you leave with five that are really cool. So it was really fun because people get really creative. People had been to it multiple years in a row, so they had different favorite things. And I had a lot of fun with my sister and with her friends. When do they become your friends? Because I would like at what stage? Some of them are my friends, but some of them aren't. Like Like, you introduce all these people as Sam's friends. And I feel like a lot of them are like, well, I thought we were friends. Well, Okay, so the thing is, in high school, my sister's friends, my sister was a senior when I was a freshman, and her friends, like, would, like, try to talk to me, and she was very against that, because we weren't friends at that time, me and her weren't, yeah. and so she didn't like it when her friends, like, talked to me, and so I always want to be conscious of, like, they're her friends, and, like, yes, some of them are becoming my friends, but it's, like... I want her <laughs> to know that I know that they're her friends, oh my as well as some of them I really met for the first time on Friday. Right. But I would say Tanika, for example, yeah. is an actual your friend as yeah. well. Like Steph and Nano. Exactly. Yeah. Like they're your friends as well. Yeah. We're um, working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, on Friday night, I hung out by myself, which yeah. was actually kind of nice because I haven't had a whole lot of time to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just got to hang out with the dogs and uh, relax. And then Saturday we worked. Mm-hmm. Most of the day. Most of the day. And then we went over to your parents to mm-hmm. celebrate your birthday. Yeah. Delayed. Um, I not only got the whole month, but I got a little bit into November. It's crazy too. how that works. It is um, crazy. I'm, I'm giving up, you know, part of my birth month that I've never celebrated as a month. But yeah, um, no one's ever celebrated their birth month. And now this year I'm getting texts of like, where's my birth month celebration? It's like, didn't know you celebrated. That's, that's a not me, me thing. By the way. That's a me thing. <laughs> Anyway, we enj- we enjoyed some delicious, your favorite, Papa, Papa John's, John's pizza. Papa J's. <laughs> shout out. Oh, yeah. Sh- free shout outs here. Uh, so we had some Papa John's, watched Tennessee get their ass kicked by Georgia. Ooh, rough game. Tough. And then followed that the next day by watching rough the game. Packers fall oh, to the don't Detroit even Lions. Say it. Like, I just... <laughs> I'm in <laughs> denial, to say the absolute least. Yeah, I like refuse to accept that is what ha- what has happened and what the season has been this year. I just refuse to accept that is the record. Yeah, and I will say, so I grew up a Kentucky basketball fan. My family, like, eat, breathe, live Kentucky basketball. So that was my whole entire childhood, Kentucky. And Kentucky basketball, one of the most winningest programs in college basketball. So being a Kentucky basketball fan is a good time because you're winning and you love it and it's great. I also went to Kentucky, so I got to see them win and play well. Uh, Football team wasn't there yet, but now they are, which is really exciting. So I've always cheered for a generally winning team. I become a Packers fan when we get married and Packers are killing it. They're doing their thing. Aaron Rodgers back to back, MVP. Not looking like back to back to back. (laughs) It's not looking like back to back to back. Uh, Yeah, It's got to turn around in the next few weeks for it to really be be a back-to-back-to-back if it even is still possible. So I was like, ooh, Packers, winning team as well. And this season has been rough. It's been hard. We, My heart rate during that game was at like 70 to 90, like the whole time. So for four hours, my heart rate's just elevated and I'm stressed. And I literally was like watching the game like through my fingers, like it was a scary movie because I 
did feel like it was a scary movie, honestly. Yeah, it's just, it's a bad movie in general. Like I've watched a bad <sighs> movie every Sunday. But anyway, um, it's a very draining process because then yes. you watch them lose and then you're just like, well, today's over. Yeah. I just want to go to bed. But, you know, <laughs> there's stuff you have to do. When 1 p.m. games, then it's like, no, the day's actually not over at it's all. It's just halfway through, basically. Yeah. Um, so that was the weekend. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. Um, but we've got travel on the horizon for the holidays. And uh, I think that we've got a lot of, very helpful tools as we, uh, as people navigate through their own travels and, and how they go about their training. Yeah. So when it comes to training and traveling, what would you say are like main pillars people should keep in mind or even just an attitude that they should keep towards training and traveling? Flexibility and giving yourself grace. Mm -hmm. I think that too many people think that they're going to find the perfect scenario and trying to find a gym that has every piece of equipment that everyone knows what your training is going to be and being able to do exactly what you would do at home. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that that probably is not going to happen. It would be great if you're able to find a gym. Maybe you're consistently going to a lifetime gym and there's a lifetime near where you're visiting and you're able to just plug and play. But for the majority of people, um, that's not going to be the case as well as you're probably around people who you don't get to spend a whole lot of time with. And it's much more centered around spending time with great people that you don't see frequently rather than you getting the perfect training session in um, during that trip. Yeah, I think that just setting your expectations is huge within this of recognizing it isn't going to look the same. And as long as I have that expectation and that understanding going into it, I'm going to feel better than going in thinking everything's going to be the same and I should be able to keep all of my training exactly how it is now and just seamlessly get through the holidays or travel or whatever it may be. And this is a realization that I, I came to over time. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it's been over the last couple of years that I've come to terms with approaching this differently because I used to be the person who tried to do it exactly how I did it when I was at home. Mm -hmm. I, I would try to do my sessions exactly how they were scripted um, at the same intensity and everything was about me and I wanted it to be, um, I got my the same pre-workout, I, I was having all the same situation um, and realizing that I was taking away a lot of what the holiday season was about of getting to spend time with my family that I just didn't see a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, this is coming from experience. This yeah. is coming from doing the, I don't know, I don't want to call it the wrong thing because it's, it's specific to your goal. Mm -hmm. And that's going to dictate more of the specificity or the accuracy within the training while you're traveling. Um, and that's an important thing to, to keep into account. Yeah, I would say the main things you want to think about when you're looking at training and traveling is what your specific goal is right there. Are you in a diet? Are you in a contest prep? Are you at maintenance? Are you in a building phase? As well as being able to look at your training going into it. So have you been consistent going into it? Have you been struggling with consistency? Looking at what your travel plans actually are. How long are you going to be gone? Because if you're only gone for a few days, you can just take those days off and then come back to routine and you're going to be A-OK. -okay. I have some clients that are going to be gone for a week plus. And so navigating around that is going to look a little bit different. Uh, the next thing you want to be able to take into consideration is what the holiday means to you or what your traditions are. Because I know in the past when we've traveled for um, the holidays and navigating through visiting multiple families, it's pretty difficult to get out to the gym. Not only do we not always have a car with us, uh, but it's also as far as we don't have a specific plan to each day like we do when we're at home. We have a very specific schedule so we understand what is going to be done and we understand training is going to be in there. Uh, but if we are kind of going with the flow and being able to be present within those time frames, then that's going to look a little bit different for what approach you're going to take within training. But for example, this year, we're going to be at home the whole time and we're having people come visit us. We also have a home gym so we can stay a little bit more consistent consistent as a whole than if we were going to be in a different situation. And so looking at it not as this is travel or this is the holidays, I need to do a blanket statement or do what everyone else is doing. It's looking at your situation and the circumstances for that situation. And from those circumstances, really building out what that game plan is. Right. And, and one thing that I will say 
with clients who are traveling over the weekend per se or, or something along those lines, don't try to double up your sessions in one day. Like if you are on session three and it's like, well, I'm going to miss session four. So I'm going to do session three in the morning and then I'm going to do session four in the mm-hmm. evening. Like that, I, I've had clients do that and I would advise against it mm-hmm. um, just because the recovery aspect of things, like your training is not written for it to be a two a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's meant to be one single session and beat you up pretty good in that s- single session. So doing both of them in a singular day is just not going to be, you're not getting the benefit that you think you are. Yeah. You're probably doing more hindrance because now you've really elongated the recovery period um, and probably put yourself in a very s- sore state for multiple days. Um, as well as just, especially let's say that you go through the holidays and you're getting photos taken and those different factors, you may be extra inflamed or or those different aspects that you may not look the way that you want to um, just because of the stress that you put on your body because you thought it was going to be better type thing. Yeah. So let's say that someone does do like a two a day and then they go into travel, which is going to throw off their routine and their body and possibly again, inflammation of whether it's they're not having their normal bowel movements because they're doing plane travel or they're in a car all day. So they're not moving. So you're going to have even more soreness the next day if you're not moving at all. And then possibly you're not getting all of your water intake. Maybe your food is a little bit off, whether it's because of a travel day or because your routine is different because you're with family or whatever it may be. And then on top of that, who knows what your sleeping situation is of, uh, I know that sometimes when you're traveling and seeing family, you're not going to have the same type of bed or the size of bed that you would normally have at home. And so my sleep is normally uh, going to be less quality when I am traveling. There are some things that you can do to help with that. Like I have a travel pillow. Alex and I both have a travel pillow. And that's really helped when we're in hotels or just going to see family. But being able to be aware of your recovery is likely going to be less than normal of you're not getting your normal sleep, possibly not the same water. And then maybe you've doubled up sessions. That's really hard because now you are in a deficit it or you've like dug yourself too deep and you're trying to claw out of it while also alcohol might be involved with the holidays or travel. So being conscientious of that. But that doesn't mean that you can't pre-plan and look ahead a little bit. If you know that, hey, we're leaving on town on Wednesday, I normally don't train on Tuesdays, but maybe you switch it around to say, I'm going to take a rest day here so I can train these days and make sure that I'm in the best spot before I travel. So you can look ahead and be intentional intentional about it and proactive, but you don't have to feel like, oh, since I'm going to miss it, I better do everything right now and overdo it. Right. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box and we would love to get on a call with you. And so now that we've kind of given somewhat of an overview, if we are going to train while we travel, how do we want to go about structuring those training sessions? Um, and what do you do with your training or with your clients? Yeah. So for clients, first, I want to know, again, how long they're going to be gone. And I also look at their past training of have they even had a deload recently? Because this might be perfect timing for us to go ahead and just have a deload, have the week off of training and get movement in other ways, like going on walks or doing stretching or yoga or something to that degree. And also being able to look at what your family wants to do or what your family enjoys doing, um, where I could go and say, hey, do you want to go and do a yoga class with me since I'm in town? And someone might be like, yeah, I'd love to do that. Or do you want to go on a walk with me each morning? So it could be a perfect time for a deload for someone. But otherwise, I actually have been asking my clients about Thanksgiving and Christmas and all travel plans since the end of October, because I need to ensure that their training leading up to it is serving them the best so that we can go into a metabolic training session if it works out that way, because that would be my preference. And because it allows them to get in and out of training a little bit quicker, it's also going to help when it comes to your nutrient partitioning. And I know with the holidays, you're going to be possibly eating some more food or food that you're not used to. It's going to help within your glycogen and being able to 
utilize your glycogen from the food and the glucose. So it's going to be really beneficial for having those shorter sessions and being able to benefit the processes um, or the schedule that's a little bit different because of travel and the holidays. Do you want to give greater context on what a metabolic session is since you opened that door up? Yeah, I thought we, you know, we could <laughs> we, possibly go back and forth a little bit. I'm interviewing bit. you today, actually. Uh, I don't know about that, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to metabolic training, this is going to be training that has more supersets in place. It's also going to have a higher rep range than something like a neuro or a hypertrophy phase. We're also going to have less rest. So what it may look like for a neurological phase is maybe like four sets of six with two minutes rest, whereas for a metabolic phase, we might be supersetting two exercises sizes, and it might be four sets of 10 or 12 for only 30 seconds rest. And so being able to get through those sessions a little bit quicker, um, and because of all those variables I mentioned before of sleep, water, food, all being different, we're also not trying to like hit one rep maxes or hit huge PRs when we travel. Not to say that you can't do that, and you should always look at travel as like, I'm not going to progress, but it is going to be contextual. And within this context, it's normally I want to get people in and out of the gym if they are going to train when they are with family. I don't want someone in the gym for two hours or an hour and a half. I want them to be able to get in and out in 45 minutes or less so that they can get back to what's going to be the most enjoyable. Right. I, I think that with the metabolic training, the the beauty of this is that it's it's low uh, stress in a, in a uh in a, in a way, I'm, I'm trying to not turn this into like a full education of training periodization as a whole, but also give context of like what we mean. Um, because with the metabolic training, you're going to be utilizing lower loads because of the incomplete rest method that Sue was talking about. Um, to have the shortened rest is not going to allow for you to recover as, as you would within the strength-based work or the hypertrophy-based work. So you're going to have to use less load to complete the repetition allotments that are there. And they don't have to be supersets. I think that that is a, a way of going about it. But in, in, in a gym that you're unfamiliar with or a gym that is very busy, you may only have the ability to have um, like a single cable tower and, and having to be like, all right, I've got this single station. How can I make this work? And what exercises can I perform in this place to try and hit a handful of muscle tissue or muscle groups that are going to be um, advantageous for the session and be able to get in and get out because it is packed in here and it's not likely. And I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and just uh, wait in line for mm -hmm. pieces of equipment. Like that's the worst when you're in a foreign gym and then you're just like, well, I want to leg press, but look at this line for us to mm -hmm. leg press. Um, I don't want to really want to do this. So trying to do the most with as little of equipment as you can, because um, one of the things that we encourage within our clients is that if, if you have a cable, if you have dumbbells, like we can get a lot done. Mm -hmm. it, we can do a lot of things. We just have to be uh, crafty and understanding of the circumstance and understand that it's not the best session in the world, but we're at least getting some movement. We're at least getting some nutrient partitioning and those different factors um, in play and, and go from there. And so uh, having an emphasis of it either being like an anterior posterior focus, so front or back of your body, an upper lower emphasis, or a full body approach because more often than not, when you're traveling, it's going to be a situation where you're only going to get one to three sessions in three, probably at the most, um, depending on how long you're somewhere, of course. But I think that looking at it that way, trying to minimize the amount of time that you're in there, but get a lot of bang for your buck within the exercises that you select, um, is going to be the, the best for you. Uh, as well as if you're going to like your hometown and those things, you're going to have a situation where you're going to run into people that, you know, Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of talking just to be polite. And that is what it, like, you're not going to have a, a great session in that anyway. So you might as well pump it out in 30, 45 minutes and then be able to chat before, after and, and go from there. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned that as far as supersets and it being busy. So it's just one way that you can utilize it, especially if you're possibly in a hotel gym or maybe you're, when you're traveling, you have very limited equipment and you can do those either at home or um, with that limited equipment. And one other thing I want to mention when it comes to traveling and making sure that you can maximize the time that you are with family or friends is being able to just ask people what their schedule is or what their plan is for the day. 
Again, as we've mentioned, your schedule isn't going to be the same. And so you're likely not going to have the exact same time frame what you normally would for training. Not only the time allotment, but the time of the day, it might not be exactly the same. And so I always used to ask, like, what do you guys have going on today? So if there was something where either they had a meeting or they were going to do something or possibly they were going to be sleeping in of, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get up early and get this done so that I can, again, maximize that time with family. Or if they have a meeting at this time, I'm going to go and train at that time so I can make the most of the time um, with the family. So being able to really just take a step back and instead of thinking, how can I jam my schedule into the situation, being able to think, how can I have the core things I want to get done, my non-negotiables, and still have them fit into this flex schedule that's in play. Yeah, I think that getting the training in when you are traveling for the holidays is just getting up in the morning and going because the likelihood that you're able to fit it in throughout the day is slim, uh, especially if if it is throughout the holidays, you the people that you're visiting are not working or anything like that. Um, it's probably just best that you get up before everybody else and go train. Mm-hmm. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Um, what are some other things um, within training that they, people can utilize if they have a shorter time or they have less equipment or less availability? Yeah, I think that tempo can be a a useful tool, especially when you don't have enough weight um, available to you. Maybe you're you're at a hotel gym and you're in a position where the dumbbells maybe only go up to 40 or they go up to 50 and you're needing a little bit more load, slowing things down through the eccentric portion of the exercise and potentially squeezing at um, positions in which are more challenging for that exercise could make things more difficult and make uh, get more bang for your buck within those uh, specific exercises where you don't have all the tools available to you or you're just limited on time. Yeah. That's very helpful to know. Um, And I did want to touch on what it looks like for finding a gym. So I know some of us might be going back to our hometowns and going and seeing family, but I also know people do destinations for the holidays or just travel in general. This is going to be helpful outside of the holidays as well. Um, And trying to plan out what it looks like for training. So like Alex had mentioned previously, if you're already training at a lifetime, if there's one in the area, they likely have some way that you can get a pass for cheap. And again, you are familiar with the environment at that gym, which is great. And I know a lot of clients of mine have memberships to Planet Fitness specifically for when they travel because they are everywhere and they can have memberships at those different gyms and know that they go in and they know exactly what to expect and to be able to get that session in. But some things that we recommend when we're traveling in general is looking ahead of time for a gym nearby. And so just being able to get on a map app and check around around the area of where a gym's going to be, but also taking into consideration, are you going to have to Uber somewhere? Do you have access to a car? Because I know when we've traveled and we've flown and we don't get a rental car, then it's like, I don't want to be Ubering everywhere. That is not only very expensive, but it just feels extremely tedious. So being able to be aware of what that situation looks like for you personally and what you're willing or wanting or able to do, Um, but being able to look beforehand for a gym and then calling that gym and seeing, okay, do they offer day passes? Do they have staffed hours? Because Alex and I, when we go to visit his family, the gym that we go to has staffed hours. And so sometimes uh, we, or one time, at least we learned our lesson, we went to the gym and then we couldn't even get in because we didn't have a key card and we just needed to be able to see as far as the staffed hours. But it's also great to be able to ask about day passes and see what your best bang for your buck is because gyms often offer both a day pass and a week pass. And sometimes even if you're not going to be there the whole week, the week pass might be more cost efficient. And we've run into that with travel before. And so that's great just to know. So you have a plan going in. And oftentimes gyms have like tours of their gym so you can see what kind of equipment and just do a little bit of pre-planning for yourself. But if they don't have pictures of their equipment or possibly you didn't have time to pre-plan, I always recommend just taking a lap around the gym, not expecting yourself to know everything 
anything. Just take a lap, get a feel, figure out what your plan is for your session. Or oftentimes the cardio is overlooking a big portion of the gym. So I'll go ahead and just walk a little bit to warm up and just scout out everything and kind of see what the situation is, uh, where people are crowding, where there is some flexibility. Because I'll also write sessions for clients, like Alex said, that are possibly just cables and dumbbells, or where they can just kind of be in one corner with a little bit of equipment and be able to get in and get out and not have to deal with the mad dash to everything else. Yeah. And and a cheat code within getting day passes is that when you purchase your day pass, ask if it is for the calendar day or is it for 24 hours Mm -hmm. from purchase? Because some gyms are going to be 24 hours from purchase. So if I went at noon and I I purchased at noon, I can go the next day before noon and that day pass still applies. That was a cheat code that we used a lot at Lifetime until they got kind of frustrated and and honestly (laughs) changed the rule because of us, I think. Um, I think they changed a lot of rules. They changed a lot of rules. (laughs) And uh, going back to the the Uber and uh, the day pass, like you got a $20 Uber. Uber, a $20 day pass, a $20 Uber back, like $60 a day isn't really it. You yeah. know? So I think that uh, yeah, figuring that out is going to be important. And then having that call or getting on their like website, because oftentimes uh, companies will have like a one free day pass mm-hmm. or, or something along those lines or a seven day free day pa- or week pass, I suppose. Like um, those certainly are things. And then asking around and, and uh, potentially sliding into their DMs, those different aspects can be helpful. Uh, I'm trying to think of like all the, the cheat codes that I we've know. used for day passes. I- Alex is out here sharing all the secrets. <laughs> it was, I mean, for the the year and a half or the year that we did long distance, we were having to get day passes at each other's gyms the whole time. And it wasn't enough to where it was worthwhile for us to get a membership at the other's gym. It was like close, but not enough. And uh, it was great to build relationships with the people at the mm-hmm. counters, um, not to expose any of the lifetime employees slash other gyms that we would circle around to. Mm-hmm. But um, they definitely let us train for free on a semi-regular basis because they were kind people. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, building relationships are, are helpful, yes. are, are good things. <laughs> um, and people also have guest passes for gyms. Right. So if you are in town and let's say your sister goes to a gym and you're going to join her, she could get you a free pass for the day. And then you also have a buddy who understands what the layout is and you're able to get in, get out and have a free ride and a free pass. So there's lots of things that you can do to kind of cheat the system in a way, or just more so be conscientious of what the system is so that you can make the best decision. Uh, But like we said, it's not always going to be the best idea to train while you are traveling. So whether it is that there's not really a gym nearby, you don't have a car, or maybe the environment that you're in really doesn't lend to you being able to go and train, just being able to think about movement and again, those non-negotiables for you. So what I've been talking about with some clients is making sure on the travel day that they have snacks packed or they just have snacks packed for the trip in and of itself. Because I can't tell you how many times it's come in handy for me to just have new go bars on hand or me to have different snacks that we often go to, um, protein powder on hand. So if we are hungry or we're in a situation where there's a weird gap in between meals, we have something and I'd much rather pack something and not need it than not pack something and need it and kind of feel like I'm stuck in a bind where I'm starving, but the only option is eating something that's not going to make me feel well. And I'll also, also often travel with having just a few meals prepped. This doesn't mean that I have everything prepped and I'm going to hit my macros to a T, but it's just being realistic of let's go ahead and look at what the situation is. Is every single meal normally provided? Are there some meals that it's kind of thin for yourself? What does that look like? Who are the people that you're visiting? How do they eat? And what is that structure? Because you need to be able to show up for yourself and look out for yourself. And so we'll often make sure that we have either stuff when we get there to be able to make breakfast or have some things ready to go. Because that's often something that's kind of like you're on your own. So go ahead and get what you need to have done and have that food ready. Um, And when we look at movement, being able to get creative. So like we said, asking your family members or people that you're with to go on a walk, going on a walk yourself, being able to do yoga, even looking up YouTube videos, not only for yoga, but maybe like a dance video so that you're able to get some movement in and always being able to honor what's going to make you feel the best. I know 
in past years, there's been times where it's like, oh, the people who get up and do the are the tweets that are like, I'm so glad my family's not like a turkey trot family. And for a while, I had that mentality. And then last year, I ended up like going for two walks on Thanksgiving, and it ended up, I believe, we trained. Well, I would say that going on walks leisurely with your family and getting up at 5 a.m. to go tr- to a turkey trot that you didn't train for is a little different. Yes, I understand that those are different, but I'm just drastically actually. <laughs> I'm just saying, like I used to look at it of like Thanksgiving is just for like sitting on your butt wow. all day, and now I'm able to look at it of like I don't have to have that mentality because that doesn't make me feel my best, and so I'm not forcing everyone around me to do what I want to do, but being able to still honor how I'm going to feel my best. And if that's changed from past years, that's okay. And you're allowed to change and evolve and decide what is going to be best for you. Yeah. I think that getting a little bit of movement honestly makes you feel better anyway, because you're getting to eat uh, a lot of really good food and it will digest better with maybe a walk after lunch or or what have you. And having a walk in the morning just makes you feel good uh, and getting some sunlight and those things is going to be advantageous. So simply getting movement throughout the day is, is going to be the move um, throughout the holidays. Yeah. And like really the the only other thing to honestly even just reiterate, it's not new information, is understanding what that trip is going to be. Instead of thinking I'm going to keep the status quo, it's I am going to have this, this, and this happen, but I'm going to ensure that these things are still a priority to me and I'm still able to show up for myself in these moments. And I don't have to be perfect to still be following the plan and the plan can change when travel is in play. Do you have anything else to add when it comes to training, traveling, any more cheat codes you thought of? Bring your Versa grips with you. Yes. Make sure you have your Versa grips. Um, a stopwatch will be helpful. Um, keep your phone in your bag or keep your phone away from you. Try not to spend a whole lot of time on your phone in between sets because it's just not going to be advantageous. It's not a time to really waste time within the gym. Um and allow yourself to have fun. Try some different pieces of equipment that you haven't maybe seen before at a gym that you've never been to. Uh, allow for yourself to kind of play around if you've got the extra time all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and and have fun with it. Give yourself grace. Um, and not everything's going to be perfect, and that's okay. Is there anything specific you're doing for this uh, holiday season or any travel that we have coming up um, that you think would be helpful to talk about? With Thanksgiving, it's a little bit of a a cheat code because my parents are coming here. So there's not a whole lot that's going to change while they're here specifically. But um, if and if we travel for Christmas, then at that point, um, my game plan on that front is just to probably take full body sessions. Um, I'll get to use some equipment that I haven't, I don't, we don't have here at the house or at a gym local to us. So I think, uh, I'll be able to play on some different pieces of equipment. I prefer to have some gnarly leg sessions when I'm out of town. I think that it's just a fun way of introducing myself to a a new gym or different (laughs) equipment as a whole. Um, so starting with a leg session for sure. And then maybe like a full upper and probably call it at that because we'll be gone for maybe four or five days. I'd be lucky to get three sessions in. It'd be fantastic if I could, but I also understand that I'll be working at the same time. So in that context, work will come first. Mm -hmm. Um, So I may get a a backseat to training, but that's just the reality of the five days that will be gone. Yeah. And I think it's even though we've said like you're not always going to have the best sessions, it doesn't mean that you can't challenge yourself. It doesn't mean that you can't still have really great sessions. I've had some incredible sessions when we're traveling, uh, but being able to, again, recognize the circumstance and making the best decisions from there. Well, awesome. Hopefully you're able to use some of these cheat codes and I will catch you on part two when we talk all about nutrition and traveling and making sure that you're set to go. Thanks, guys.